If you ever worked with SQL databases in the past, fetching data using queries such as this one should look familiar. Also, you are probably well acquainted with the headaches caused by update queries, where you have to do a lot of manual work and double checking to make sure the result is the desired one. In this video, we'll take a look at Prisma, a TypeScript based ORM which will help us refactor queries looking like this into code looking like this. I know, there are a lot of alternatives to relational databases these days, but here is the fact of the matter. Relational databases are still the most popular data storage solution out there. 7 out of the 10 most popular DB engines are still relational, so, even though you might want to use a fancy data tool, the chances are you are still relying on plain old SQL in your day-to-day -day job. While old, SQL is battle-tested for almost 50 years now, and it proved itself as the best tool for the job. However, there are some drawbacks when writing SQL. It offers almost no security constraints, so basic attacks like SQL injection can be easily performed without validation at the application layer. Queries can easily grow in complexity, leading to the need of specialized skills. There is no logging mechanism when it comes to migrating between different versions of the database structures, and, finally, there is no type inference between SQL results and the application layer. To solve these issues, developer communities came up with the idea of ORMs, which act as a bridge between your application code and the underlying database. Tools such as Prisma offer even more benefits, so, in the next few minutes, I'll explain why adding it into your next Node.js or Dino project is a no-brainer. Let's not waste any more time, add the Prisma npm package in your project, and then initialize it using the following command. The init process will generate two files, a .environment file, where we'll configure our database URL, and the schema.prisma file, where we'll define our models. Prisma supports a wide range of databases, but we'll use Postgres for our demo. We'll start by defining a post entity with a couple of fields. The ORM will map the table columns to TypeScript objects, so, in the definition, we'll start with the field name, followed by the object type, and, if needed, by various database configuration annotations. For instance, the ID field is a string marked as the table primary key, and we'll use an auto-generated default value to populate it. It's always a good idea to use audit columns in your tables, so I am adding a create and an update date, both using some default values. Note the use of the map decorator. We'll see in a second that Prisma can generate the table structure for us based on this schema file. However, in the generation process, the table and the column names will be matched to the field names defined in the model. The naming convention in the relational database context is to use snake case instead of camel case, so I'm clearly specifying the column and the table names using map. Let's have a 30 second sidebar on the database relationships topic. In relational databases, we can link tables together using foreign keys. More often than not, you are going to use this feature to link your entities together while also ensuring data integrity. There are three types of relationships. One to one, think of a customer who is linked to an address. The customer expects the delivery on that address, and, in theory, there can be multiple users living on the same address. One to many, think of a blog author who can write multiple posts, but the post can have only one author. And, many to many, think of a blog post which can be assigned to multiple categories, while each category can also contain multiple blog posts. So, getting back to our schema, let's add a one to many relationship between our post and member models. We'll get back to this in a minute, and you'll see that these linked objects can be populated on demand by the ORM. For the sake of going through all scenarios, let's define and map the many-to-many -many relationship between posts and categories as well. The many-to-many -many link between two entities relies on a third relationship table called post category. Also, note that this table has a composite primary key based on the post and the category ID. Of course, it should go without saying, any database table is required to have a primary key. This can be either a single unique value, or a combination of two or more values. With the model in place, we can use the migrate command, and two main actions will be performed. First, a migration directory will be generated. In here, you'll find SQL files with all the necessary statements needed to create the table structures associated with your model. And second, the actual tables were created inside Postgres. Ok, now let's jump into a plain TypeScript file and see the ORM in action. I'm going to create a Prisma client object, which can be used to interact with the database. The first main benefit should already be obvious to you. We gained types and code suggestions for all the tables we can work with. Once we choose the member entity, the second main benefit should be obvious as well. 
Prisma offers you a wide variety of methods covering all the create, read, update, and delete operations you might need. So, we can create a new member in our database by simply calling the create method, or if the situation requires it, we can use create many instead. I'm always trying to put things into perspective, so before checking out some more Prisma goodies, I want to spend a few seconds looking at the code required to perform database operations without an ORM. Don't worry, we won't spend too much time on this, and I'm sure you'll appreciate the perspective. So, let's install a Postgres TypeScript client, and in a new file, I'll initialize the connection pool. Connection pools are a more technical topic, but it is enough for you to know that opening database connections is a time and resource intensive process. Therefore, the general approach in backend development is to open multiple database connections, maintain and reuse them for the entire lifespan of your application. In the find by ID function, I'm passing the ID to a select statement. There are two things of note here. First, the ID is passed directly to the statement, which is a big no-no without prior validation. A malicious user could exploit such code via an SQL injection attack. Second of all, I am kind of cheating, since we are using the member type which was actually generated by Prisma. Without the ORM, the member type should have been manually defined. What does this code look like when an ORM is used? Well, it'll probably end up looking like this. Way better, right? In the same note, here is a create method performing an insert to the database. Compare it with the ORM version, and you'll be the judge of the better approach. Getting back to Prisma, I mentioned earlier fetching data from multiple related tables via joins. While the SQL version can be fairly cumbersome, the Prisma version is way more cleaner and self-explanatory. To be fair, there are reasons to use plain SQL over the ORM abstraction. Writing raw queries ensures the highest degree of flexibility. Also, because of the direct control over your statements, the chances are you could write better performing selects directly in SQL. Whenever you think you are better off writing plain SQL, note that Prisma allows you to write raw queries as well. Another great feature we'll look into is Prisma Studio. However, before doing that, please consider helping me fight the YouTube algorithm by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Oftentimes, when storing and fetching data, you'll find yourself double-checking your implementation with the actual data saved in the database. You can do this by using the command line or a UI tool such as PG Client, but Prisma offers Studio, a web app you can easily start in your project. In here, you gain access to all your tables, your data, and the UI to perform the basic operations. At the end of the day, Prisma is another tool that really improves the developer experience and brings us one step closer to a production-ready stack where TypeScript can be used starting from the UI buttons and going all the way down to database operations. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts about Prisma, and until next time, thank you for watching.